And I use the vibrato on this song in a way that's not blatantly vibrato. A lot of times people use it for... I'm using it in a very subtle fashion in this song to kind of emulate the way vocalists vibrato. Because on guitar, typically when you vibrato with your fingers, you're just moving the pitch up. You're oscillating it up from the original pitch. But when you vibrato with the vibrato bar, you're getting a smooth up and down. You're going below the pitch and above the pitch, and it has a very smooth sound. Also, you can bend up to notes in a certain way that you can't really do with your fingers. Or if you did, it would, it would require a lot of thought because you'd have to go down a half step and do things such as that. So in phrases like... If I didn't use the vibrato, I'd have to do it like... Or something like that, it'd be very awkward in a way. And also with the vibrato, you can get a, a much smoother response. I try to use a lot of different speeds for expressive purpose of vibrato. Sometimes it's effective to do a, a fast vibrato and sometimes very, very slow. And then sometimes you can use a real extreme vibrato that may seem out of context sometimes, but if you just touch on it in a certain way, it'll give a certain character to it. Like in the, sometimes in the phrase in that song, I'll go... Uh, I'll go... And it just, you just kind of touch on it for a minute, like... The guy that does some extreme vibratos in the guitar that's influenced me and, you know, a lot of people a lot is Jeff Beck. He does a lot of things like that. Sometimes he'll play something with like Just a little bit of something, you know, that seems over the top, but if in the right quantities, even in a slow song or a ballad like that, it can be, can be very expressive. Coming up next, in a brief interview, we ask Sean to explain his guitar and stage setup and talk about his musical influences. Some of my influences were maybe Frank Marino then, and that's when I got into Hendrix and some other people. But really what turned me around on guitar and music was were two different things. I saw Alan Holdsworth play live in concert in 1978, and I was about 14. And I didn't know who he was. I just showed up at the concert. It was uh, it was with the band UK. I didn't even know who they were. I just went to the concert because it was uh, some bargain concert, I think. And uh, it just really changed my whole life about guitar and really made me see guitar in a whole other way. And, you know, I, I thought I wanted to go in, in a direction like that after I'd seen him. And also the keyboard player that uh, I ran into a couple years later that played in uh, Black Oak, Arkansas, a band with me about thir 12, 13 years ago. He was a classical pianist, and he had learned from the time he was a kid to play a lot of classical pieces, a lot of Liszt and Brahms and Rachmaninoff. And uh, up until then, classical music, I just didn't think much about it. It had always been, when I was a kid, it was just something that was pretty or something, or something that was just kind of in a museum somewhere or something. But when I saw this guy really play this stuff live, it really had a big effect on me. And so I really saw the vibrancy and the aliveness of it and how it could still relate to any time. It's a timeless kind of music. So that really had a big effect. Copied some records, but I'm just a tremendous music fan. If I, if I never even played an instrument, I'd still have all the records I have. And I'm really, first and foremost, I consider myself a music fan more than really even a player. I'm just, I have about 6,000 albums of all styles of music, classical, jazz, everything. And I just love so many of the great people. And that inspires me so much that my own music is almost secondary to that in a way, you know. Yeah, this is a guitar that Ibanez built for me. And... Uh, it has uh, some of the neck is modeled after the guitar that I played the longest, which was a, a Roland guitar. It was the guitar that came with the original synthesizer, the GR300. I got it in about '79, and I played that guitar for about 13 years or something. And uh, and so when I had Ibanez build me this guitar, I had to model the neck after that guitar because Ibanez was actually the original manufacturer of the Roland guitars too. It was another Roland name, but Ibanez made it. And uh, I always like Curly Maple, I'm, and because I played that guitar so much, I'm really attracted to uh, arch-top guitars. I, I really don't, I'm not real comfortable with a flat top on a guitar, so arch-top is, is where it's at for me. Any special electronics there? No, I, I tend to uh, like uh, just DiMarzio PAFs, 
these are, uh, I think this is a PAF with a kind of a low magnetic pull, some new thing that they've kind of come out with. But um, my theory is toward uh, uh, weak pickups. I don't really like the real loud and hot pickups because I just hear too much of the electronics and too much of the uh, fuzzy kind of sound. I think if the pickup is real weak and then you get the, the volume you need out of the amp, then you're hearing more of the wood and the string. It's just an overall better tone. Strings. Well, I use uh, Diodario strings, and uh, I like all different gauges. For use nines right now, but uh, you know, if sometimes I like to tune to E flat or even down to D. I might use a heavier set, but uh, I'm really, really happy with the consistency of those strings. And we're good. And guitar picks, just straight ahead. Well, guitar picks, I use these Jim Dunlop Jazz Three picks. I like kind of a small pick that I can fit in kind of the first joint of my finger, and uh, uh, I like the point. I can't use Jazz 2 or Jazz 1. I have to have like the point that's on the Jazz 3. They made, uh, they changed the formula a little bit on these, and I kind of like the older ones better, but I use the new ones right now. Live, I try to play in quadraphonic. I use uh, usually four amplifiers. I have one set of effects, usually a delay or a chorus or compressor maybe sometimes, um, that go through all the amplifiers. Then each amplifier, there's one amplifier that's in real time, and then each amplifier after that is delayed a few milliseconds from the previous one. So if you have four amplifiers, you might have one in real time, then you might have one delayed 10 milliseconds. The whole signal is delayed. Then the next one might be 12 or 13, the next one might be 18 milliseconds. And that evolved out of playing a lot of top 40 in bar bands and stuff, and so many of the rooms I played just had atrocious acoustics. So instead of